It's been a long, hard road to get there, full of drama, harsh words and sudden twists. But tonight, with just a couple of hours to go before the U.S. imposed deadline, Canada and the United States have hammered out a deal to save NAFTA. Even though the agreement is getting an awfully big rebranding, Katie Simpson explains what that means from outside the Prime Minister's office tonight, as well as some details about what's in it. Katie. Rosemary, NAFTA is no longer called NAFTA. It will now be known as the USMCA, the United States-Mexico-Canada Agreement. And that is part of this whole new negotiation, this whole new trade pact uh, that uh, Canada, the United States, and Mexico have agreed to. We're starting to get some of the details of exactly what Canada agreed to after a very, very difficult weekend of negotiations. When these talks started, the, the, the intensive talks, the process really ramped up through this weekend. Sources were telling us it started with some significant challenges remaining, uh, but after a number of uh, very intense phone calls between Ottawa and Washington, negotiators were able to find enough common ground that they came out with a joint statement tonight and, of course, this new uh, agreement in, at, at, with the details to uh, sort of be uh, explained over the next few days. What we know so far, there will be some wins in there for Canada, but also some concessions. On the concessions, Canada is going to be allowing more American farmers to sell more of their products in Canada. The details uh, we are hearing there are very similar to what was agreed to in the Trans-Pacific Partnership. However, um, so all of the details have not been specifically released yet, so dairy farmers will really have to take a look at those details to see if there are concessions in there that they can actually live with. Canada gets to keep Chapter 19. That will be considered a win for Canada. You'll remember the Canadian said this was a red line. It remains in the deal as it had been previously. Another big win for Canada, the cultural exemptions, they still remain intact. Remember, Canada made a big deal about that in the final push here. So, of course, uh, the Canadian arts industry, Canadian broadcasters, uh, that is something that they had been hoping to keep in this deal. Now, there's uh, not such a big win when it comes to tariffs, not necessarily, at least at this point. Uh, the U.S. is not going to be lifting tariffs on steel and aluminum yet. Uh, the Canadians are hopeful this will happen in the coming weeks and months before this deal is actually signed. Also, Canada is going to be given some sort of uh, uh, some sort of uh, generalized sort of um, uh, assurances about the Americans uh, not targeting Canadian uh, vehicles and Canadian auto parts for tariffs. So again, uh, those are some of the some of the wins and losses after this very intensive negotiation period. Certainly, the Prime Minister came out and said this is a great day for Canadians, uh, but certainly a relief for his government to at least get to this point. Okay, so so some of the broad strokes, more details to come, obviously, in the coming days. We heard a little bit from the prime minister, very little. We're going to hear more from him tomorrow, I guess. Anything else from the government tonight, Katie? Uh, the Prime Minister will be holding another cabinet meeting tomorrow, and then he's expected to speak sometime after that. Christian Freeland uh, may speak at some point, but again, uh, when these things happen, you don't want to overshadow the boss, even though she's been the one who's been leading these negotiations. At the end of the day, this is uh, the Prime Minister's deal to sort of celebrate. Okay, Katie Simpson, still outside the Prime Minister's office tonight. Thank you, Katie. Okay, the dispute resolution mechanism, Chapter 19, that was always a must-have for Canada. It appears to have been secured with this deal tonight. But that's really only one of three big issues. Katie talked about some of them. Uh, and the agreement with those issues in, in, intact has literally transformed trade between the two countries. The amount of money now crossing back and forth is dizzying from roughly $280 billion in 1993, just before NAFTA came into effect, to almost $800 billion last year. But for Canada, two industries have been of special concern. I think any breach of the Canadian supply management system would be a full attack on agriculture in general in Canada. Trump has long targeted Canada's supply management system. Canada has opened up the dairy sector in the past, at least slightly, to pass a free trade deal with the EU and with the Trans-Pacific Partnership nations. But that's small potatoes compared to competition with American dairy farmers. 
We're thinking about just taxing cars coming in from Canada. That's the mother load. That's the big one. That prospect has really kept Canadian negotiators up at night. Canada produces close to two and a half million cars a year, employing half a million people, either on the assembly line, making parts, or at dealerships. Okay, so is this, in fact, a win for the Trudeau government? Let's look at the politics of making a deal with our national affairs editor, Chris Hall. Okay, Chris, the, the PM always said no deal better than a bad deal. Tonight, he seems satisfied. Do we have a sense of whether he should be yet? Well, let's start with dairy, Rosie. That is one of the big issues that, uh, that Canada was trying to protect. And we know that farmers do vote. And, and for example, there's an election in Quebec on Monday. Uh, and that is of concern because already uh, the Quebec Liberal leader, Philippe Couillard, had said he will go to court if there's any diminution of the protection that's given to farmers. So look for that. On the federal level in 2015, when those concessions were made to the 10 Pacific Rim countries in the Trans-Pacific Car uh, Partnership, mm -hmm. uh, there were protests on Wellington Street in front of Parliament Hill, uh, farmers bringing their livestock, spilling milk on the street. So uh, that will clearly be a big issue. Uh, on autos, um, this is a bit more interesting. The auto uh, is a, there's an assurance that these national security tariffs already applied to steel and aluminum will not be put on cars and that there will in return be a cap on how many cars can be exported to the United States from Canada, and that includes also auto parts. Uh, I am told as well uh, in excess of what any projections both the United States and Canada have for the growth in that industry. So that will be seen presumably to be a win. Okay, and, and obviously, you know, we'll, we'll drill into these more over the coming days to figure out uh, what else had to be given up and what else uh, they got to take away. Other members of political parties have been looking at this. Uh, it had been Team Canada up until this point. Do we have a sense tonight of how that may play out in the days ahead? Yeah, a, a couple of really interesting. Rana Ambrose, the former interim leader of the Conservative Party, tweeted out tonight, uh, this will help ease anxiety, uh, investor anxiety, stabilize trade, exposed sectors, and reassure the world that North America remains committed to free trade. From Andrew Scheer, who is a conservative leader now, uh, he says that his party will be closely looking at the agreements provisions as soon as they're available to evaluate the real deal that Justin has, Justin Trudeau has negotiated. So clearly there's, there's obviously a now a, a juncture about what was given up versus what was gained. Was it worth dragging these negotiations out uh, as long as they have? And in other words, is, is Canada going to be better off as a result of this deal? Clearly the Liberals will be counting on it overseas. Uh, the Kenyan dollar uh, was trading up about a half a cent uh, on international markets, so that's one good sign. We'll see how the stock market does tomorrow. Clearly, the Liberals want to come out, though, and say, we have done this here. We are better off, and to list their wins, the Americans will be obviously doing the same in Washington tomorrow. Okay, Chris, and we'll try and make sense of it all then. Our national all right. affairs editor, Chris Hall, who's been with us for the evening. Thank you.